Hey there internet friends, it's uh, Dan here. Um, this is a quick video following on from the, the previous lengthy um, color science video. This one's just going to be showing uh, the uh, color HCFR application and a couple of defaults that I use when I do my color calibration. Um, just because the other videos that I do, I tend to just dive into them. Um, so this will sort of show off the, the settings that I use by default. So this is the application, I'll put some links in the video on how you can download it but uh, we'll just start a new session and you can see um, how I set this up so the first thing is when we calibrate a display we need some sort of reference picture being sent to the display um, and there's a couple of different ways to do that um, this program allows a whole bunch of different ways and I'll cover maybe three throughout this video very very quickly though um, DVD manual is one where you can use a DVD source like the AVS HD 709 DVDs and Blu-rays um, that are freely downloadable uh, and you can use that as a color source to generate a picture to your screen and then calibrate against that which is kind of cool works off any uh, Blu-ray player works off a PlayStation 3 works off all sorts of different things which is kind of cool um, automatic is where you have some sort of uh, automated picture generator um, and I'll show you how to do it through this application but there are other ways as well there's some very cool people working on some um, Raspberry Pi software that can generate a picture, um, which is really, really useful for us when we're doing our standard definition uh, displays instead of our high definition displays. But anyway, for now we'll choose automatic. Uh, we choose the uh, sensor uh, that we've got. So you can, if you don't have a sensor and you just want to muck around, you can use this simulated sensor. It'll just generate some random values so you can see how the application works. I've got my little uh, Color Monkey display, which I covered in my previous video, um, and it's just attached, just a USB attached device. So that's plugged in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose that. Um, you can load a meter correction, which is kind of cool. So um, these cheaper displays, they tend to drift um, in their color accuracy over time. So if you know someone who's got a, a super duper, like a Klein or some other sort of photo spectrometer, really high end device, you can calibrate your cheap device against theirs and get an offset file. Um, but for now, I'm just going to assume that my device, which is pretty new, um, is pretty accurate. I'll just choose finish. All right, so um, I just have to move this out of the way because my, my uh, color monkey is right in the middle of my screen. Um, now we get to choose a few bits and pieces around the screen. Um, so this, I'm, I've just got this attached to my laptop just for demonstration purposes. But you can choose all sorts of different screens there's a few that they they build various um, bits of information in for um, in the application I'm not going to use those I'm just going to concentrate on the top two um, so we either have a non-refresh display or a refresh display non-refresh display is any display that doesn't have a constant refresh cycle ie pixels come on and they stay on so a non-refresh display is an LCD or an OLED basically uh, and a refresh display is something like a CRT or a plasma. So if you're calibrating your CRTs, choose your refresh. Uh, I've got it on my LCD on my laptop, so I'm just going to choose non-refresh. Um, what sort of reading type you're going to do? So display is where you put your probe right up against the display. Uh, a telephoto is like one of those cool client thingies that sits back a, a while from the screen and sort of, um, you know, you're sitting, however many feet or meters away from the screen and it's it's looking at the screen that way it's that's the way you do a uh, projector calibration as well um, and then ambient so if you want to take ambient light measurements for whatever reason um, photographers will probably care about that more than us um, although in in high-end studios they'll take ambient measurements just to make sure that everything's uh, kosher in terms of the the lighting quality around the viewing platform but for us we're going to choose display because we've got a probe right up against the display um, and then the observer type. Now, this is some high-end uh, um, color science stuff in here. So we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to go with default for our purposes. That'll suit nicely. Um, likewise, you can manually put in a sensor matrix here. If you happen to know your sensor matrix, this this is the, the offset. So um, uh, it's a, a 2D matrix. And you can change the values here to change the sensitivity on the XYZ scale. We covered XYZ a little bit in the theory video about what that means in terms of uh, color science. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave it as the, the standard matrix, which means that we assume that our, um, our probe is, is accurate. All right, so that brings us to the application. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to quickly, quickly go through a couple of uh, options in here. Um, first and foremost, if we go to Advanced and Preferences, um, the Reference tab is what we want to look at. 
Um, and in here, um, the two sorts of things that we really care about are these color spaces that we're going to uh, calibrate against. Um, now I covered this a little bit in the first video. Rec 709 is the current HDTV standard. Um, and if you so if you're doing you know um, standard HD television, if you're doing your OLED at home or whatever, you'd probably do Rec 709. Um, and I tend to calibrate against Rec 709 mostly because the the reference material that's out there, so the the DVDs that generate pictures and the Raspberry Pis that generate pictures, and this application all generate um, standard Rec 709 information. Rec 709 is a little bit different to Rec 601, ever so slightly different to Rec 601. So Rec 601 was the standard for SD television in North America. Um, so PAL CCAM was a little bit different. Um, and this is where it gets a bit tricky. The Japanese standard um, was for broadcast for a period uh, unofficially used a completely different white point, used a white point of uh, 9300 Kelvin instead of our 6500 Kelvin. Um, so that, that makes things all sort of different when it comes to white points and whatnot. I'm going to ignore all of that. Um, I'm going to focus on, on Rec. 709 to calibrate all my stuff against. If you've got some sort of philosophical argument for using 601 instead of 709, with the same, they've got the same white point, um, you know, go for it. You, you calibrate your display the way you want to do it. I'm going to calibrate mine to 709 just to keep everything easy and everything consistent throughout all my videos. Um, up to you how you want to do yours. Uh, all right, and then the last thing here is the, the generator, how we generate the image um, that's going to be displayed to the screen. I'll show you that in a second. Um, so first things first, choose the right display. So if you've got a couple displays, um, which is normally what happens when you're, you're plugging your laptop into something else to calibrate something else, you've got to pick the right one there. Um, how I generate the picture, I choose the GDI full screen method. Um, so that, that'll totally take over the entire screen of whatever is being calibrated um, and send the colors to that. Um, I display the triplets of the, the color point just for interest sake. That's the, the coordinates of the color. Um, um, and the output that I choose, so this is your, your full range RGB versus your limited range RGB in these two boxes here. So when I'm calibrating, I tend to force my laptop to spit out full range and then I calibrate to full range. Um, you can do, if, if you are sending limited range, um, it gets a bit confusing because then it's a, if you're limiting within a limited range, it's all a bit weird. But anyway, I, I tend to just go full, full, calibrate to that. And then if my uh, video game console is doing limited range RGB, then that should scale appropriately, even though my screen is calibrated in this particular way. Um, and then the final way, the final option is to disable the video LUT. So if, if at any time um, you've got any sort of other... Um, color management, any gamma correction, anything like that happening in software, um, this will disable it and send what they call a linear profile, i.e. a one-for-one -one profile from this uh, device or whatever you're um, calibrating from out to the screen. So they're the, they're the options that we care about for that. All right, and then finally what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a quick uh, grayscale test. So these are your tests up here, and, and I'm not going to go into these in huge detail. Um, because I, there's other videos that I'll do where I go into much more detail on a on a display by display basis. But for now, I'm just going to run a grayscale test, just so you see that process, and just so we see what these values look like here and what these things here look like, and and how we um, how we're going to uh, calibrate against those. So, quick gray, grayscale test. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. So you can see the triplets there. So zero 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 being black, obviously on a on a zero to two hundred fifty five uh, grayscale. Um, and generally speaking, darker colors, blacks and, and dark colors will be slower because um, there's fewer photons making it into the sensor and the sensor has to capture a certain number of photons to be accurate. Um, so you'll see as these colors lighten up, they'll go a little bit faster because the sensor is just getting more information. So it's just running its way through, uh, about halfway at the 128, getting up into the lights and whites. And, and just by eye, I can see these are quite inaccurate. I'm just on a, on a uh, budget Dell laptop here, um, and it screens horrible. Um, and we can see that, right? So um, when we captured the 10%, um, the so capturing zero is really hard. You need a, a good quality, um, a good quality uh, probe to do that. Uh, my crappy little x right won't do that. It'll probably, probably be quite inaccurate at the 10%, at the um, but certainly up here it'll be a bit more accurate. Uh, but what we can see, so if we click on a value, right, so this, this delta E column here, right, and it shows me 
um, what what was captured at that particular point in time. Um, and I can see here that you know for this given range, um, my blues are pretty much bang on, but my greens and reds were very very low. And what, what that'll do is it'll make this screen appear um, more blue uh, or cooler, as they say, um, to the naked eye. So what you would do, um, and you'll see me do this in the later videos, is you would you would calibrate that by um, either boosting the greens and reds or alternatively dropping the blues. And what you'll find sometimes is when you drop the blues, the reds and the greens go up. Um, because of the, the, the way that we interpret color, um, a lack of one can appear like the others are, um, are increasing. So the software and all the color science behind this is very aware of how the human eye works and very, very much uh, tuned to make sure that this looks good to the human eye, which is the whole point, right? It's, it's not just measuring photons and being mathematical. It's, it's got a, a human element to it. Um, so what we want is this delta E. So delta E is our error. Um, and remember that we're, we're sitting in a, in a three-dimensional scale here. So back to the theory video, this horseshoe here is actually a three-dimensional shape. Um, and we're just looking at a slice through the middle. So if you sort of go deep into the screen, it goes to darker colors. And if you come out of the screen uh, on the z-axis, you, you'd be hitting lighter colors towards white. So a delta E is a, a, a delta, um, an overall difference, uh, and it's an error of 7.9. Now, according to color science, um, human, uh, the, the uh, humanly distinguishable value for not being able to tell the difference between you know, a color being accurate and a color being inaccurate is a delta E of 2.0. Um, so if, if I was to calibrate this, these red boxes would slowly turn to uh, oranges and then to greens once they were under 2.0. So um, again, you'll see that in a later video. The goal is to get the delta E value under 2. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different things that will affect that. So um, brightness, contrast, um, which is you know the luminance values of things and the black level uh, of things, um, as well as the actual individual color channels themselves. Um, will all contribute to that. Um, some TVs and displays have extra um, uh, YUV or YPRPB value coordinates which shift the entire color axis um, as if it's spinning in the middle so your, your blues and reds become uh, less and more accurate even though their intensities don't change if you sort of see what I mean when the, if you imagine this this whole triangle here uh, spinning around in the middle um, and these points not being very accurate at the ends. Um, and then, of course, yeah, the individual color channels themselves and our sensitivity to that. Um, so there's a few things that matter when we calibrate. And again, if we click through here, we see all these different columns are, are different error levels. Um, you know, I, I rant about this all the time. Displays, factory displays are often very, very blue. And the reason for that is that blue light gives this uh, feeling of intense colors, um, high saturation levels, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, very much... Uh, around human perception of, of light and what color what colors we value for, for brightness, especially in uh, in whites, remembering that there is no such color as white. It's a mixture of all these other colors. Um, so yeah, a lot of factory displays are, are very blue by default, and this this demonstrates that pretty well. Okay, so. Um, I'll demonstrate in future videos on a number of different displays. Uh, that's interesting how the red sh shoots up at the end there. Um, I'll, I'll demonstrate uh, in, a, in future videos not only how to, how to fix these, how to get these uh, delta E's down. Um, sometimes if you've got a, a, like a good reference monitor and it's got heaps and heaps of cool controls, you can get these really spot on. You can get these delta E's right down to fractional values. Um, which honestly, again, below 2.0, really, I, it, I'd see a lot of people get really obsessive about this. Um, and you can get obsessive about this, like we all can with our sort of uh, projects and hobbies and, and retro gaming-y stuff. Um, but yeah, just getting them under 2 is what you want to do. Sometimes you'll have a TV, especially if you've got just like a domestic television, um, where really you don't have many controls at all. You've pretty much just got a, like a color temperature control where you can choose cool or warm or something. Um, so we'll see when we do those just how limiting the, those controls are and what we can and can't do. But, you know, we can also just run this over the top of it and choose a colour that's sort of the best option. Um, but certainly, uh, this is just the grayscale, obviously, where we only care about the, the white levels. Um, but we'll also look at the um, primary colours, um, the, the secondary colours, um, and we'll have a look at the, the saturation levels of those. A lot of TVs just blow saturation way out. So even though you know red might be accurate in terms of 
the, the color temperature in terms of the amount of red, green, and blue, just the volume of light that's coming out is way too high and it just it bleeds everything out, makes it look terrible. Um, so again, we can test that and we can get our saturation levels down a little bit back to, to sane levels. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the basics of um, this software, the, the HCFR software. Um, I'll leave links on where you can download this. Uh, again, the previous video that I did was the color theory, which sort of explains this horseshoe shape and what all this crazy stuff here means and, and the color science behind all this and, and why we're doing this. And then after that, I'll have a video where um, you can actually see me calibrate a display. I'll, I'll do a PVM first and then I'll try a couple other ones and um, I'll go through uh, different levels of pedantry as well like we'll sort of we'll just get the greys right for one and then we'll look at the other colors and all those sorts of things the advanced options inside the PVM monitors all that kind of stuff um, so hopefully we'll get there this will take me a while I'm sorry um, these things take me a little while to produce um, just because I don't have a lot of free time but I'll do what I can do and hopefully others can uh, take the ball and run with it um, all right as usual uh, I'm Dan um, I'll put my uh, Twitter handle down the bottom and if you want to yell at me do that there um, otherwise I'll talk to you soon bye